one of the most important food crops cultivated in almost all parts of the country, but more specifically in northern Uganda. Cassava is eaten in most families as a popular choice rich in carbohydrates. Along Uganda's highways, roasted cassava is a common snack preferred by long-distance travelers. Cassava is also emerging as a major source of income for many farmers who are able to reach the lucrative urban markets. Cassava was for rural dwellers initially. Cassava is now entering urban centers as food, both as fresh and processed. Efforts are being made in some parts of the country to add value to cassava through the production of cassava grains called gari. This processed cassava has longer shelf life and can be consumed in different forms. The Food and Agriculture Organization in Uganda is promoting the cultivation of cassava as a food security crop. It's favored because it has a flexible planting period and can be harvested throughout the year. Mature tubers can be preserved in the soil for long periods, even in adverse weather conditions such as drought, when other crops fail. Cassava is also easier to multiply compared to seed crops. You multiply by cuttings, and uh, so the people, of course, they will not eat the cuttings, which is the difference between the, with the, the maize or the beans. Very often the people, if they are in a hunger gap period, they will start eating the seeds, and with the, of course with the, the cassava they cannot eat it, so it's also an, another reason why it's an important crop for the food security. Another one is, just with one plant you can eat two things, the leaves and the tubers, so that's another good reason for, for promoting the, the cassava. This popular food crop has been hit by devastating diseases which have affected production in Uganda and the region. Cassava mosaic disease, CMD, and lately cassava brown streak disease have spread to all regions in Uganda and have destroyed over 150,000 hectares. This translates into a loss of about 1,500,000 metric tons of cassava tubers since early 1990s. It actually reduced cassava production to a bare minimum, to a level where we actually thought cassava was becoming extinct in Uganda. But thanks to research, we moved in very fast to develop the resistant varieties. Farmers like Livingstone Obura in Amira district face a bleak future with their families as their main food source is hit by cassava disease. <laughs> Uganda has made various attempts through the National Agriculture Research Organization, NARO, to tackle the diseases and devise ways of minimizing their spread. In this particular field, we have 45 new varieties that we're evaluating for yield, uh, resistance to cassava mosaic disease, and resistance to cassava brown streak disease. Uh, this experiment is repeated in eight different sites across Uganda. Naro has successfully developed varieties like Akena and 2961, which are resistant to cassava mosaic and are tolerant to cassava brown streak disease. FAO is using funding from the European Commission Humanitarian Aid Office, ECO, to facilitate the multiplication and diffusion of those varieties in northern and northeastern Uganda. We established with NARO, the National Agricultural Research Organization, we established 100 hectares in Teso and Lango. This year we got another support from the same organization, ECO, and we are establishing another 100 hectares but now we do it in Acholi, in partnership again with NARO and NRC, the Norwegian Refugee Council. FAO is working in partnership with some non-governmental organizations 
like the Norwegian Refugee Council and the Catholic Relief Services, who also multiply the varieties developed by NARO for distribution to the affected communities, especially those undergoing resettlement in northern Uganda. FAO is also supporting cassava multiplication in prison farms in Lira for distribution. Erute Prison Farm has 36 acres under cultivation of Akena and 2961 varieties. At another site, at Loro Prison Farm, cassava multiplication started in 2006. They now have 32 acres of old stock. The partnership is good because it leaves us with the, the roots to feed the, the, the communities around the prisoners and staff. And even the villagers around benefit because some who are interested in getting the planting materials, they always access it easily. They don't need to go very far. FAO is also supporting distribution of the approved cassava cuttings through local NGOs which have links with farmer groups. A Parch District Agriculture Network, ADAN, has been actively planting and distributing cassava cuttings in north and eastern Uganda. It has used FAO support to distribute more than 10,000 bags of cassava cuttings to farmer field schools, returning farming households and the ones affected by the floods in northern Uganda. The farmers further multiply and distribute the cuttings to increase the number of beneficiaries in the neighborhood. The new disease-resistant varieties are already improving the lives of the farmers who embraced them earlier. Ruth Aman has been growing the Akena variety and in the last season she was able to harvest 350 bags of cassava. She has realized significant economic benefits. We sold Akena. We got a lot of money from the stem and the, and the, and the cassava itself. This is what we have done with it. We have, bought a, we have built a house with a can. And we have children we are sending to school with what we got from a can. FIDA International is also actively distributing cassava planting materials using FAO support to 60 farmer field schools in Apache and Lira districts. Each farmer field school group, with an average of 30 members, received 5 to 10 bags of cassava planting materials to produce tubers for consumption and sell, but also cuttings to be shared amongst members and neighboring farmers. And what we are doing is we are trying to give them the technical support on how to multiply the seeds rapidly in the community. So we give them, like each group has a facilitator who is a trained personnel with agriculture background who will help them every week, come and check on them and guide them on how to handle, manage and properly check on the multiplication garden. Benefiting farmers are hopeful that the new varieties which have no sign of the dreaded cassava mosaic disease and cassava brown streak disease will offer them a better future. Akena in the name of me. Oh, Charlotte, ye, Nenny, and you are total, and we don't become why any. Local councils have helped enact laws against damage of crops by domestic animals, while district authorities are involved in the propagation of the new varieties and coordinate efforts of the NGOs. Our farmers are appreciating the effort which Naro and FAO are doing of supporting them with a very good variety because the one they were planting doesn't resist the, what, the diseases. Uh, their request is that if the if FAO and NARO could again research and give them another variety, short term, and which can yield very well. Increasing popularity of the disease-resistant and tolerant varieties has also increased demand for planting materials, hence the need to multiply more. 
And basically what we need is to continue to train other farmers so that they take up cassava multiplication and safeguard on the material so that they don't destroy and waste them. We also train them on how to recognize these valuable materials. They can identify and separate from other varieties. Internally displaced people who are now returning to resettle in their villages of origin have further escalated the demand for these planting materials, which are limited in supply. In the long term, FAO is facilitating cooperation between research organizations in the region to share information on new disease-resistant varieties and harmonize efforts to eliminate the disease in the region. And we have uh, developed a collaboration between NARO, ISABU, which is the research organization in Burundi, INERA, which is the, the same but for Congo, and uh, ISAR in Rwanda. So and we are looking at this organization to see if they have other varieties which are also uh, tolerant or resistant to the Brunswick. And if it's the case, then we will ask NARO to bring some of the, these varieties to Uganda and to test it in a, at the station level, but also at, uh, in a, at the farmer level. I guess we, we hope to have more varieties to be disseminated. FAO is also supporting Uganda government in its efforts to develop a policy and strategy to promote cassava for both food security and economic benefit. FAO is also helping us now in developing uh, the coordination mechanism for, for the development of cassava industry. That's where we are now actually on the table discussing with FAO how can we um, push this crop from the lower status it was to a higher status. Better access to clean planting material remains the main challenge in restoring and enhancing cassava as a leading food security and economically beneficial crop. Our objective that we decided with uh, NARO is to have at least 50 hectares in each district in the north and 50 hectares as a mother garden. Like this, after that, all the NGOs can go to that mother garden and get uh, some cuttings. And after a sub mother garden within the sub counties and after to the parishes. But we would like to have at least 50 hectares in each district. That's the kind of uh, concrete implementation plan that we have with NARO. <laughs>